Hi, my name is Patty, and I am going to walk you through some color basics today. I'm going to try not to keep this too get this too complicated. Um, I once was a color novice and myself, and it's actually almost kind of funny to me that I am actually making a video on color because I was that big a novice. Um, we have some neat tools um, that are going to help us through this. We've got a mixing mat with color wheel on it. We've got a color mixing guide. Um, you don't have to have all these tools. I'm just going to use them as props. We've got some value finders so that you can see. We've got some new books to talk to you about. But first of all, let's talk about what color is. Color is obviously the colors that we see. And the colors that we see have all been given names. So we all know the basic names like red and blue and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, on this color wheel right here, they actually give you, in the middle of this color wheel, they give you the blue, the yellow, and the red. Um, to make all the colors. Okay, so those are our primary colors. Those are the colors that you use to mix all colors. Um, now, I'm a bottle baby, meaning that I grew up using, um, you know, deco art craft paints, and that's what I have always learned my color theory through. I've never really delved into oils or any of that kind of stuff. But even bottle paints are actually made with the three primary colors. Okay, and the primary colors are the yellow, the blue, and the red. Okay, and then from that, what I like about this is they've, they've divided this up into 24 colors. Um, over here we only have, I think, like 12. But obviously your purple is not going to just walk right next door and become, you know, a pinky red or a blue. It sneaks up on it. So they've broken it down to have the sneaky little steps that go into it. Because if you use a little bit more blue than red, you're going to end up with a purple that leans um, to the blue side. Okay. So that's you know our basic color families, and we really don't need to worry too much about that unless we want to start mixing. And this video is not about color mixing. Okay, this is just about the color vocabulary and how to make some decisions. For decorative painters, how color theory can help um, is it can help you with your shading and highlighting. It can help you um, toning colors or using tone colors um, that are too strong or just right or whatever, but it's really good to know um, what that is to isolate it. And then creating a color scheme is very valuable information. And then your color balance, and that's something that we're going to um, talk about because when you are, let me give you a color balance example. For example, when we come over here, this is a cover of a magazine and a rose modeling um, project. Let's go in this way. When you're looking, oh, there we are. When you're looking at the, this um, project right here, if you're looking at it and you, you've got a white, a white, a white, a white, and if you don't have good balance with this, then your eye is going to kind of fixate and get stuck in one spot. And how you lean to your whites is going to be really, really, really um, important. So um, we're going to talk about how, how to ensure that you don't end up with a problem. Uh, more it's just about problem solving, I think, than anything. Okay, so our first, um, besides knowing that our colors are um, the, the primary and then the secondary colors, we're going to go into color families. And there's two kinds of colors. There are warm colors, which are going to be, basically, if you think about it, any color that has yellow in it. They're going to be your warms. And your greens can be warm or cool, okay, depending. Now, this has actually got a warm green in it. but this is very much a cool palette. And when you're looking at your color families and stuff, and you put your little, these are wonderful little um, color mixing masks. They, um, this one tells you what it is. It's an analogous color scheme. This is a tetrad and stuff like that. And it's not important to memorize this, but when you're choosing or trying to identify why is this charming to me, well, number one, it's a cool scheme. Number two, um, it is analogous, meaning that they've taken colors all from the same side of the color wheel. Okay, and so when you divide up your color wheel, you're going to go boom, right about here is our division point. And so on this side, we have all warm colors, and on this side, we have all cool colors. And if you notice what they've done here, is they have popped in this very, very warm pillow next to this. And what that's doing is it's giving us some contrast. Okay, so um, in contrast, you know, when we have a, a hyper person married to a very low-key, relaxed person, 
um, then you end up with that beautiful contrast and the one settles the other down and the other gives energy to the other. So that is what color does is things give energy to things and it settles things down. So you can use that information if you're familiar that it exists. Okay, and this is an example of a color scheme that is an analogous color scheme, basically, but it does have some little pops. Um, but it's going to be basically just one color. It has um, just a little bit of blue, um, green in there. But this is a toned color family. Okay, so when we look at our blues, we'll go into this wonderful color tool here. We go into our blues, we can see that we have pure colors on one side and then we have our toned colors over here. So this is toned with um, toned with gray and then this is toned with black and this is toned with white. So when we get over here you can see definitely that these colors have been toned with white. And so toning means when you tell someone to tone it down you're telling them to put some put a filter on it and get it down, quiet up, and that kind of thing. So when we're toning a color we are making it duller, less loud, less vibrant. I mean, like, let's face it, we don't need to paint rooms with these colors here, but we might be very settled down and very toned over here. Um, so these are the vibrancy or the pure colors. They don't have any mixers or fillers and things like that. Um, and then these, actually, sorry, these are mixed with grays. These are mixed with black and these are mixed with white. Sorry about that. So over here, you're toned with, um, your grays and things so that is how you're getting that that tone way down and then these are slightly toned okay sorry to confuse you okay we're going to kind of zoom in on this picture here so if we're thinking about painting i'm going to go in and use my little mixing tool we're going to look for whites in this painting okay so we've got a painting and we're going to look for our whites well we've got these we've got little women sitting back here with hats and we've got women sitting here with hats and we've got um, you know, very obviously some whites in the front. Notice where your whites are. They're all right here kind of in the center and you notice that they, where you want the eye to focus is on this lovely little tea party that they're having. Um, and then you come over here though and these whites are toned. So white is a, is a value. We're going to get into that in a minute. But if you want things to recede, you can tone them down and they're going to recede into the background. So even though this is this person's white, I bet you um, it's a lot darker than you think it is. And if you want something to disappear, you make it more like your background. So if you squint your eyes at this, you can see they're there, but you can't quite really see that they're there. But definitely this contrast right here, um, you can see. All right, so we're getting a little bit kind of deep into this. This terminology, there's no test on this terminology, but um, it is definitely, it's good to understand what the terms refer to. I'm not going to introduce you to these um, tools. We've got, um, a, a lot of us use Decor Americana um, craft paint. It's just really affordable. We created a new book. Um, this one is Paint by Name, and this has got swatches of all of the colors, and they're alphabetically arranged by name. Um, we've got Paint by Number. And so these are the swatches, and they are organized by their um, Decoart Americana number, okay? Then we come over here, and we've got Paint by Color. And the Paint by Color is actually a book of color families, and it gives you an index and stuff. But for the toned colors, to understand where things sit, if you're working with Americana paints, this is an, a handy guide, because these are your pure pigments, okay? And then these are your toned colors. Okay, so then you can understand, oh, this is a very intense color or very pure pigment, and I can move over here if I don't want so much attention, and I could select something a little bit more toned. Okay, so that's the book is designed to give you some of this vocabulary. Um, and then what we've also done is we've given you a V scale, which is a value scale, and I'll talk about that in a second. And um, we've given you the shading and the highlight colors um, and their number and their name. So, you know, if you're painting with Sunny Day, you can shade it with marigold and um, and highlight with buttermilk. And what I like about this is it gets you started in your vocabulary with the words toned, with the value code, with the color family, and it shows you where these things fit in that. Now you can't go find um, these. Let's see, da da da. Where am I? 
So you've got paint by name here. You can look at teal green or your tangerine color here and you can say, oh, I see, it's an orange color, and then you could go find it in your orange or greens or whatever um, color family. So we've done this with this book using this tool. We've used the same families that they gave those names to, and um, we have designed it. And we've even given you the card number that this lives on. So if you want to use this tool, what I like about this is if you're in your yellow greens, um, let's see, you go into your yellow greens, and you're on 3.9, so you're here, over, it's a pure pigment. This book gives you the CMYK, it gives you the RGB, and I'm not sure what that little code down there is, but these are web development tools, they are um, fabric swatch tools, they are um, Photoshop, they're all the things. So um, it has every name on here that you could possibly need, and on the back it has like the color families and suggestions um, for you. So we've referenced this tool just because it is so handy and that way you can fit everything into your, um, into your color families. Okay, the next vocabulary word that we want to cover is going to be value. Value, this is called a value scale and as the name scale um, insinuates, it is something that can be measured. Okay, so this gives you a measuring device for lightness and darkness. That's all it means. It is, is the color light? or is the color dark? Okay, when you come into our paint by color guide, and uh, mine is the prototype, so it's like not stapled and things like that. Um, anyway, if you come into here, um, you can look, so say, what, it, what does value do for you? Let's talk about that first. Value creates form, okay? So if you have, if I painted my little jingle bells here, or my, um, actually jingle bells are a really good example, the middle where it's highlighted with a light color comes forward. Where it is shaded with a dark color, it forms backwards. Okay, and that's what makes round things look round and fluffy things look fluffy and that kind of thing. So, um, for example, and I think this is a really good example, if you look back to our little painting here, I love how, even though this is not decorative painting, when you look at the, um, this woman's um, dress, you can see that her sleeve is a puff sleeve because she's got this shaded area right here. You can see that it flares out because they used a different value paint. You can tell where her waist is because they've cinched it in with dark value. I mean, this, if you think about it, it is a flat thing, but they have made this woman into a rounded shape by changing the values. Okay, so that's what value in decorative painting is going to do for you. And there's a wonderful, 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 wonderful rule called the rule of two. Okay, and the rule of two says that if you are starting out, say you've got a color that is, um, we're going to go with light avocado. Okay, so we've got light avocado over here in our chartreuse family. And these, some of this is not intuitive. Like you cannot absolutely not see this like with your eye you'd be like hey that's green well when you dial up we did all of this with four sets of eyes and we went through each one of let's find our chartreuse when we did this we matched up the bottles of deco art paints or actually the painted color chips and we matched them to these cards you can see when you kind of come over here that you're not even in that same color family so a green is a green is a green yeah but it definitely leans to different colors of green. So you want to definitely know your color families. Anyway, so you're in your light avocado and it's got a value of eight. All right, so we know it's an eight. And by knowing that number and having it just assigned here, you don't have to do the work um, for it. So you're, you're starting here. Maybe you've base coated a Christmas tree with the value eight. Well, now I want to shade my Christmas tree. Well, the rule of two says that if you go two steps up from um, your value that you start with and you shade two steps away, so I would be looking for a color that was a 10, then it's gonna be just the right amount of contrast to give roundness, but not to look um, severe, okay? And so same thing, if I wanna highlight, I would go two steps back. And I'm sure you've all, um, painted something where you started way too light, like you took a white to shade like this color green, 
um, and it looked very chalky or the only thing you could see is the white. Okay, so the rule of two, you're going to go two steps in either direction. If you start at a five, you're going to go up. If you start here, you're going to go down. Your white is not going to work the same way because um, you're going to start down here. It's like, how can I go two steps down? Well, what you might need to do is actually make the decision to start with a three value that you can highlight to the to the one. Okay, so um, that's how you're going to do this. And if you think about it, it's like walking across one of those scary Amazon wooden bridges that have ropes, you know. And if you had three steps missing, you maybe you couldn't reach across. But if you just have two, then you can skip along very nicely. So that is how you're going to make decisions with your um, with your values. Okay, so by by knowing that Hauser Light Green is a value eight, you now know if you need to go find a highlight color or a shade that you're looking for something with a value that is less. Okay, and then this is on the back of my um, color palette. I like to use this neutral, and it's neutral because it's a value five um, background. And so by, there's a thing called simultaneous contrast, and we'll, I'll tell you what it is just because when you're mixing colors, it, it is important. Um, if you mix white on a black background, your white is going to look really dark. Um, or really bright and strong. If you mix black on a white palette, then you're going to, you can't tell, you can't make good decisions. So by mixing over here on a neutral, um, then it gives you the ability to decide a little bit better. All right, we've created some new little um, color tools. Sorry, my hands look like huge right there. Um, these are value finders, and there's actually a value finder on board on this color tool here. Um, this is... I have two of these sheets here, okay? So, but this is like in the book and it's better to stay in the book. So we wanted something just on a keychain that you could use. So what I want to show you is balance. So we've got, so when you're, this is for, if you're doing a project, you're doing a decorative painting, um, you're doing, um, you've got even just like that um, canvas painting that I was showing you earlier. So when you're making these decisions, how light do I go? Sometimes, and I've done this myself, I was painting a, a big long tray and it was a Rosemary West project and I had roses over here and roses over here and they were white roses just like these guys and um, she mixes a lot of her colors and when I when I mixed my whites I didn't mix them of a value that was dark enough and so it was on a dark blue background and so I didn't know that like the project turned out beautifully but I was always I just didn't like it and I couldn't figure out why I didn't like it and it was those two roses my eye just had to keep going back and forth and back and forth and I couldn't see like the forest for the trees because of those two distracting roses so as painters when we're doing our highlights if you're a bold painter then you might have to learn to you know tone it down um, and if you are a timid painter or a soft touch painter you might need to tone it up all right, so the way that we're going to um, look at this, these, these little guys, you're going to love these for your painting projects. So let's pretend that, okay, we see our whites, we see our whites, we see, you know, we see that that works out. Rose modeling projects have to have that toning right, otherwise, or the um, the color balance right. So I'm going to put the, the red over. So see, when you look at it, it takes color out of it. You don't see colors anymore. You just see, sorry, you just see value, okay? And when we go with the green one, you can see value as well. But look at the balance. It's not distracting. Now watch what happens when I put something like that big white rose in play. Now your eye is completely distracted by that big bunch of bright value. Okay, so when you have something not balanced, that's what happens. It's exactly like putting something that just doesn't belong there in the mix. Now there's one more thing that is a color like trick that is so helpful to me. Um, it's called walking your color. I, there's probably another name for it, but when you are deciding on balance of color, or you're putting little pops here and, and stuff, if you have just like one blue here and you don't have any blue out here, then you're going to have what we call an isolated color. And that means that, you know, it is right there and actually our painting right here whoops where is my painting 
it kind of has. Well, it doesn't have an isolated color. Look and see what they've done here. They've got this red right here. But see what they've done is they've brought a dark red here. They've moved in with a dark pinky color. They've got an orangey pinky red right over here. They've got a little bit of the red over the shoulders and in here. So this, and they've got a little bit of red over here. So this is not isolated because it's moving around the thing, okay, around the painting. So in a decorative painting project, what you can do is you can walk with your fingers and try to touch and get from like blue island to blue island to blue island. Here's a touch of it on the leaf. Okay, so that's a really good way to know if you have moved your color around your project enough. Okay, I want to talk about um, the intensity of colors. So let's back back out and let's look at, if you look at this um, settee, okay, and you see your yellows here. Your yellows are very intense color. You know what the word intense means? It's that person who is just like, no, you'll do it my way. You know, they're just so focused on, on whatever their goal is. Well, yellow is intent about being very yellow here. It's very intense. Okay, so it's a bright, pure pigment. Okay, then over here we've got yellow in this project right here, or in this, um, this fabric. And what's so interesting to me is like, you know, these don't even look like they could be the same thing, um, but because we've toned them down just a little bit, um, then you can use them with other kind of color schemes, if you will. So this is an example of a toned palette. This is blue, this is blue, this is yellow, this is yellow. Um, but you can see that we have two completely different intensities of color. And sometimes we have intensity going crazy. Okay, so in the case of this bag, um, but it works really well. So you can make decisions to have things be super intense, or you can make decisions to have them, you know, super subdued colors. Okay, so um, you, if you are aware that your yellows, and this is where, once again, this um, comes in, you know, you're aware that these are all yellows, but, you know, you don't think of these being yellows, you know, the, this is um, antique green, but you don't think that that is um, going to be in the yellow family. But what happens is if you mix, um, I'm not sure which yellow, whichever one is the, um, let's see which one, our cards are usually about eight or nine is the, the pure color. So if you mix bright yellow with a little bit of black, you would get green and you get this really cool kind of army green. Okay, so and then if you mix it with um, a little bit of gray, you're going to get, so that's gray is black and white, um, you're going to get into this reindeer moss, okay? And then this is just with, say, maybe a little bit of white. So you can get over here to these browns and greens from your yellow family. So really fascinating to know that you can tone it all the way down to this. Okay, we're going to get in close to this color mixing guide because I think this is, this is so interesting. So... Think of these things as, this is, your color wheel is basically like a um, little bit like a times table or whatever. It just, it's a guide to show you the colors and the families. This is more like your times table, actually. Um, so this is your, you know, 1 through 10 and your 1 through 10, and it's got, you know, your color families, and then it's got your, um, your other colors over here. And if you take, you know, black and you go across and you get, what do you get? You get that lovely... Um, army green okay and you can go like red plus green let's do um, blue plus yellow where's my blue over here and you're gonna get your green let's go red plus yellow you're gonna get orange so it's this basic stuff what I love about it though is it shows you um, there's a couple colors on here that are just real super weird um, I realized that my lights were not on and this is the part that matters. So, um, but like if you go way up here, this is kind of this beautiful um, toned, corally, orangey brown kind of color that would be absolutely gorgeous on a wall or whatever. But it is mixed using um, cadmium yellow and quinacridone magenta. Like I wouldn't even think to put those two colors together. You know, um, there's just some really neat. Um, when you look at colors, you don't think that they're going to be the colors that made them. Like um, 
if you go down cobalt blues row here, you get into some pretty crazy purples and some browns, and it's like, whoa, and then look at the greens that makes. That's crazy talk. So um, neat little tool to show you, like if you did need to mix a color, you would start with your you know, pure color, which you can you know, isolate out here on your chart, and then you can work from there um, to see which one you would want to mix. Okay, and on the other side of our mixing mat, we have another color wheel. We've got your grayscale over here. We've got your um, neutral mixing area. Great for um, classes or um, placemats to keep things, you know, tidy and whatever, wipe them off when you get done. Um, and on the back side, it has got all the examples of the color families and then an image to show, you know, what that would look like in real life. And, you know, I'd like to close and talk about, you know, we all get dressed every single morning. And besides um, the fact that a lot of us wear a lot of black these days, we do dress in colors. You know, I've got a lovely um, plum color on today. You have favorite colors. It's going to be colors that you just like, and more than likely you've gravitated to them because they look good on you. And they look good on you because they go with your um, with your palette. Your, your hair has a palette. Your skin tone, I have a blue skin tone. I never would have guessed. Um, so I, I don't do well with um, you know gold jewelry. I do much better with my silver and that kind of thing. Um, but when you know what colors look good on you, then you can put them together and um, it's much easier. So you get dressed every day and you've decorated your house. You probably know a lot more about color than you think you do. You probably just don't have the dialogue or the terminology. And that's what I love about some of this stuff is these give you your, um, your, your words that you can use. Okay, I'm not quite ready to close out. I wanna talk about um, just one, one last thing that would be super helpful for decorative um, painters or actually for all artists. Um, I tend to go back to mama with the decorative painting part, but it's just with all art. Um, one thing that all of these things have in common is you'll notice that, th like this is a red background, but you don't read that as I'm a red background. It almost is like a brown red or whatever. It's toned, it's a toned background, and it has the most color, if you can see that. Um, there, if you look at space and area, the most color in this um, in this project is a toned color because then these other colors can pop right on top of it. And look at this one, the same thing. We've got some beautiful florals and stuff like that, but what is the one color that you see the most? You see a toned color. Same thing here. What's the one thing that you see? You see all of this creamy toned gray color. Okay, so when you're looking to make something beautiful sometimes you need to start with um, just like face makeup you start with that neutralized tone and then you can put some sparkle on the eyes and you know a little blush on the cheeks that kind of thing but you wouldn't want to paint your face blush cheek red you know so you need to start with one so that the pinks sit and nest on the the, the area okay and the same thing goes for this and in the case of our chair if like we want a blue and yellow color scheme, um, we're going to make the dominant color be something that's a little bit more, I'm sorry, we've got a glare now that I've turned the lights on, um, more, if we did this whole thing yellow in, in that vibrant color, it would be really kind of obnoxious and we'd need to settle it down with the things behind it. Um, and if you notice too, um, that brings me to one more, more point, when you're doing your color balance, um, you can't have red everywhere. You know, you want to have a good balance of colors. So we we have a dominant color, which is our neutral. Um, doesn't always have to be, but in the, most cases, it's going to be a good choice. And then from there, we want to have a secondary color, and that's going to be something that is a little bit like we've used it quite a bit, but not doesn't. It's not the background color. And then you want to have those highlight colors or those pops of colors. So. That's a really good piece of information when you're designing or painting a project that you, you need to have a, a body, then less, and then less, and then maybe just some sparkle colors. And I think on that note, I think I've, I've done my best to give you all the basic dialogue and relate it to our painting projects, um, and I hope that that helps.